Uh, we're not done today, though. We still have a couple more treats for you. Uh, next, we're going to have a reflection, uh, and then following that, we're going to have adoration. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you a very special person. He's one of our own Catholic Brothers for Christ, who is now a deacon. And we're just excited to hear his words of wisdom and follow up to Father Flynn. So let me welcome Deacon Paul Mahoney. Hey, good morning. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, so we put on the armor of salvation. And we heard, uh, I'm fired up. I don't know about you guys. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for sharing that with us. But, but what do we do next? What are we called to do as men? We understand we have to step forward, but what does that look like? Well, uh, I'll, I'll turn to Matthew 28, 19. We'll be reminded what is next. That we are to, therefore, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's what this group is about, is about discipleship, and going and sharing the love of Christ with each other and with others as well. And so, if you ever notice what happens when you, when you light a fire, you light a candle or a flame, you know, what happens? You know, we see energy, we see heat, you know, we get a warm glow, light starts to illuminate. Um, it overcomes darkness, but it illuminates our path. And so, we're called to be disciples, to be that light of Christ and share it with others to illuminate their path. Give, give a quick model of discipleship, and then we're going to talk about some examples of what it looks like in action. So, so if we go on that call to discipleship that we heard in Matthew 28, 19, there's, there's really four things that the discipleship journey looks like. You know, we seek, we encounter, we grow, and we share. And so with seeking, so when people are starting to seek, they're looking for meaning in their lives. You know, they're looking for purpose. Okay, and they're open to discovery and inquiry. That's our time to introduce them in a loving way and to share the gospel of Christ with them. Okay? And then we, we look at the encounter phase. And so, so, so once, they've, once they've opened up and they're searching for something and we lovingly share it, then it's a, a chance for them to encounter. And so they hear the gospel message. They realize that Christ died for them. And then they receive the love of Christ in their heart. And then what happens? Then they want to go and they, they feel the need to respond to that love. They, and then they, but they do it freely. They have to choose it freely. Okay? And then what comes next is growth. Tremendous growth. Okay? The first thing that happens in that cycle is they feel the call that they've received Christ's love. They just have this burning desire to then share it. And so we walk with them um, and help them learn, hey, there's more than just myself in this world and my interest in my will. And then what they do is they grow in that relationship. They start pursuing Christ. And, and uh, then, then their presence takes over their heart. And then they, they express it to the world through love, joy, you know, kindness, generosity, and, and, and wanting to serve others. So that disciple becomes more selfless. And then as we heard Father Flynn talk about a lot, which is very important, and mine's right there, by the way, is Scripture. Dive into it on a regular basis. Let it speak to you. And so that's all called to help others on, on that journey of discipleship is, is to be, be willing to step forward and share Scripture with them, reflect on it with them, and ultimately teach it. Okay? And so, so another way we grow on that journey is then we help that disciple become stronger in prayer. And so spiritual growth is all about building that relationship uh, with God. And we do that through conversation with God. So a lot of people often ask, hey, well, um, I'm not an expert at prayer, or I feel uncomfortable praying with others, or when I hear something that somebody's going through, I just tell them, oh, I'll pray for you. Well, as disciples, I'll give you a quick, easy model to follow. Follow the words P-R-A-Y. Pray. You can do this on any situation with anybody at any time, but it's important that you pray for them right there on the spot. It might be uncomfortable the first time we try it, but that's what we're called to do. And it looks like this. The P stands for praise. So we can, somebody can call on you at any time, or you can encounter somebody, and here's a quick way to uh, craft a prayer for them. Praise. 
Offer our glory and our praise to our Creator. Or repent. We ask the forgiveness for our sins, our transgressions, those times we fail to recognize Christ. A. Ask. We need, we need to ask for the healing. Or whatever the ask is, what the, what the prayer intention is. And then yield. Yield to the will of our Father. So that's a great formula for a, a great way to be a disciple to others on the spot. And then in sharing, the final part is, is once you have grown and walked with that other disciple, it is our responsibility to pass it on. At that point, you and others will have a desire to share with others. We share it in the way we live, in being, being witnesses to Christ. We share it in the breaking of the bread, celebrating the Mass, going to, um, uh, celebrating the Holy Eucharist, in the celebration of the sacraments. We share the love of God with the way we treat and take care of others in the community. And then what I really want to spend the most time on this segment is, is we gather in community, okay? So we, our, our faith is a communal faith, okay? It's vital for disciples to be involved in a spiritual development group with other disciples. And I talked about that flame earlier. If you look at a fire, you look at coals, you look at wood burning, when we don't add more fuel to that fire, that's when it grows cold. The same thing with our spiritual life. We've got to continue to add fuel and be with other disciples that are on fire. So people need consistent contact with disciples and, other, uh, uh, and others um, of the faith as accountability partners and support partners. Because the number one reason, and Father hit on this earlier, but the number one reason that people give up on their relationship with Christ is they try to go it alone. And we, we look at um, the history of our salvation. You know, it started in the Garden of Eden. They tried to make their own decision, exercise their own will, and live outside of authority. So we need to be careful. We need to live under the authority of God in with fellow disciples. And then we look at, uh, we look at, you know, life. It's all about growing in that relationship. So it's got to be something that's very important. So then, as we grow on that journey, the disciples then receive God and, and, and Christ, and they let that love grow in their heart. Then, then after that burning desire, they, they want to serve others, okay? But then that authentic disciple not only um, learns and shares the faith, but then they create other disciples, okay? And so they take those gifts that they have and they share them with others and always be prepared to give a reason for your hope. And so if somebody asks for that reason, no matter where you are, be open to sharing Christ with them no matter what it is, okay? And then the last thing we've got to make sure that we do, and then I'm going to give you a couple of examples of your discipleship in action, okay? But the last thing that we have to do is we have to realize whether we recognize our own talents or not, we can ask our brothers and sisters around us to, in humility, talk to us about the gifts that we have. And then it is our responsibility to share our faith and to be those disciples, but the way we do that most importantly is to take the, the time and the talent that we have and put it to good for the church in the service of others. And so, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, an example might be, uh, hey, our youth ministry, but my kids are growing up, but it doesn't matter. He didn't say, is it convenient to you right this minute? He said, are you available? And will you do it? So just take the take your talent and your time to be sure to share those gifts because all gifts only have value when they're given away. Now I want to share with you, and, and I'll, 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 as we walk through this, I want to share with you some experiences I've witnessed um, with with my brothers as we walk through um, what was a five and a half year journey um, toward the diaconate. Okay. So we, I watched my brothers have great joy as they were invited. And they started the process and began to learn how to pray uh, in community. Um, then, then, then I watched as, 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 as myself and my brothers, that formation journey starts gaining some traction. We're learning different skills. We're serving in different ways. 
Um, and then I saw one of my brothers very early in that process, um, you know, at work. He had a situation where his employer um, wanted him to compete for his own job. And so they, they were restructuring that company. And so, you know, this was one of the brothers that, that, you know, we knew pretty well. And we had to watch him go through that just almost immediately when we went into formation. Then I saw another brother. He was asked to unplug. He was real involved in his parish ministry. He was asked to unplug from all of that. He didn't understand why. They were preparing him for a journey of obedience and testing and making sure that he was obedient to what he was being asked to do. I saw another brother um, be sent forth to parish assignments very early in the process. We all got different parish assignments, but I saw some brothers have three and four parish assignments so they could go and be formed by other communities. So, so we got to witness that. We saw brothers go on different ministry of charity assignments. And one brother in particular was, was stationed down at John Peter Smith. And, and I was stationed down there also, so I got to, I got to witness um, some of what he encountered. And I heard and learned of a story about um, on his very first day, he's been there 10 minutes, and that brother was asked, hey, um, there's an emergency situation up on floor four. Um, hey, you're Catholic, aren't you? Uh, matter of fact, that brother was Catholic. And said, well, there's a Catholic family up there. The mother's in her last moments of life. Would, would, would you go pray with the family? Sure. So that brother went on, the, and, and, and what he encountered when he went into that room, he, he wasn't totally prepared for or expecting. There were 25 people in that room. He gave an impromptu prayer, read some scripture, but when he walked in there and saw that people, he just said a quick prayer to himself, asking the Holy Spirit to help him. Okay? Well, he said a prayer. He read that scripture verse. When he finished up, he came out. That family followed him. They gave him a giant bear hug and thanked him for being there. He hadn't been on his first charity assignment for 10 minutes. Then I heard, I heard that same brother tell me a story. Uh, he went and um, called on a patient that day who had had a stroke the day before and had to have surgery the next day. Well, that brother grew up in a hurry that day when that patient asked him, am I going to die? He had to grow up in a hurry and have a, have a conversation about what belief in Christ and salvation looks like. You know, one of my other brothers, um, you know, he encountered uh, some, some prisoners when he was there. They were very tough. And, and, and one brother in particular that day, he told me a story about how he watched this hardened criminal break down and ask for forgiveness and ask this brother how he can change his life. You know, then I also got to see other brothers at, um, you know, Presbyterian Night Shelter, for example, um, working with those without a permanent home. Um, saw brothers go on mission trips to rebuild houses. You don't have to go to foreign countries. You can go to places in this country where they don't have um, running water and utilities on a daily basis for whole counties. And so I heard those stories about how those brothers serve those people um, on that week-long mission trip, uh, doing whatever they could to make their lives better. And then one of my brothers had um, a very close family member lose his battle with cancer. And then unexpectedly, this same, that same brother so he loses his brother. Unexpectedly, eight weeks later, he lost his father. Well, his mother was living down on the other part of the country. <clears throat> All of a sudden, she's lost her second child and her spouse. She's isolated and alone. So that brother had to make a bunch of trips across the country, help her get her affairs in order, sell her house, and moved her to the Metroplex. You know, I watched another brother, um, <clears throat> you know, um, have his job eliminated. And said, hey, it's okay, we got another job for you, but you gotta move across the country. And, and, and I'm here to tell you, that brother, that was in our last year of formation. And that brother's got kids in college. And he made a decision. 
And I'm proud of that brother. Because he made the decision to say no to that employer. And he said yes, yes to God. And he stayed in this formation, didn't move, take that job transfer, and said Christ is first. So I'm proud of him. You know, and then that, that same brother that lost that job, okay? He, he was 24 hours away from, he worked for months. And we watched him. He was 24 hours away from having another one. And then the, third, the, the, the second ranking person at a, a very large Fortune 500 company called that brother and said, hey, this COVID thing's heating up. They're tra limited travel restrictions. We're going to have to put things on hold. Well, that brother went through process and ended up starting his own company. And he's launching it right now. And so, you know, we look at Matthew 16, 24. That, that's a lot of crosses that I was I witnessed some of my brothers in formation. It's not easy. It's not easy. And there's several more stories and encounters like that. But we're reminded in Matthew 16, 24. And Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So I'll give you examples of, of times of, 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 of trials in those brothers' lives. But what, what the greatest thing is, is they didn't let any of those trials defeat them. They stood up to them. Just like Father said, stand up to what you find difficult. They stood up to these challenges. They put God first in their life. And I am happy to tell you that by the absolute grace of God, I was able to watch that brother be ordained to the permanent deacon just a little over a month ago on August 10th. And it is, um, it's with humility that I tell you that that brother, that brother is me. So it, it's not a path that's always easy, but it's a path that if you're committed to it and you say, Christ is going to be the most important thing in my life no matter what. That's discipleship. Okay? And, and, and I'll tell you this. I want, I want to, I want to tell, you, tell you this. Ephesians 2.10, and, and I'm going to give you some examples of the impact that you had on all those candidates that were ordained, and, and me specifically as well. But we remember in Ephesians 2.10, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is a gift from God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For you are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, for the good works that God has prepared in advance, and that we should live in. So today's about a thank you. Okay? Thank you for being that disciple. I, will, I gave you the model of what discipleship looks like. Now I want to show you what I've witnessed you do specifically. Thank you for putting on retreats and conferences. Thank you for teaching classes. Thank you for leading prayer groups. For praying with and for us. And for me. Thank you for assisting in the liturgy. Thank you for admit, helping administer the sacraments. Thank you for hearing the confessions and for sharing your patience. Thank you for spiritual direction you've given. Thank you for the wise counsel you've shared. Thank you for sharing the word of God. Thank you for stand, standing up for the unborn. Thank you for visiting the sick. Thank you for witnessing the gospel to me and others. Thank you for correction when needed. Thank you for mentoring. Thank you for supporting the Diocese of Fort Worth, both with your gifts of talent and treasure. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for the times you've done simple tasks like stack chairs, set up tables, taking out the trash for classes and events and our youth. Thank you for saying yes and being that disciple that witnesses the love of Christ to others. Thank you for, for, for your friendship and thank you for listening to me.
And these are just a few examples of the impact that you specifically have had on me that allowed me to become stronger in faith and to share in that discipleship work along with you to fulfill our responsibility of going on and making additional disciples. And so I'll, I'll wrap it up with this and then we'll go to adoration. But there's two things I want to say. Is, uh, we look at all of it and it is uh, John 15, 16 really stands out. And it is, it was not you who chose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go forth and to bear fruit that will remain. And in 2 Corinthians, remember, it is by grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. But I wanted to share with you just one, for one minute about, remind you, um, we, we put on the armor, we've heard about discipleship, the mission of North Texas Catholic Brothers for Christ. Remember, we are we're brothers united, we're Catholic men, um, we're committed to building the body of Christ. And, and how do we do that? By uniting as brothers together, um, living those gospel values in our lives every day, being witnesses to those, and facilitating those faith building programs in our community. That's who we are. That's what we represent. That's our call. We, we welcome anybody um, that, is, that is hearing this or watching this to join us. Join our mission, join our cause. It, it is for uh, Christ in, in building up each other in the body of Christ. And so we wanted to go ahead and announce our next discipleship major event, major event. Our 2021 Spring Conference will be on April 10th of 2021. We will hold it at St. Francis of Assisi in Frisco. The theme of our conference this year will be Come to the Table. We, our featured speakers will be Father Larry Richards, Boss Rinton, and Mark Men for Christ. You can sign up on our website, CatholicBrothersForChrist.com. And we ask you to please pray and discern if you're called to this ministry. We have to sign up um, and learn more on our website. You can become an ambassador for your parish and help spread the news of the events and the gospel of Jesus Christ within your parish, connected to our organization. You can become a member of our leadership team. We always have plenty to do and tasks to help, no matter how much time you have or what your skill. Okay? Or you can become a sponsor and help us support events to help put on events like this. 100% of the donations go to a charitable cause and uh, the Catholic outreach programs within our diocese. And so whatever you give, remember, these are tax deductible when you give, you give your gifts and treasure. Again, visit our, our website at catholicbrothers.com to donate. We ask for your support and generosity.
Uh, we worked through a lot of things uh, to make this happen, and I really appreciate all your time and effort. If you're listening online, please feel, feel free to join us. Join our mission, our cause. Become an ambassador to your parish. Uh, become a part of our leadership team. If you can, donate to our cause so that we can put on more events like this. Most important, we want you to leave today a little bit better, a little bit further in your faith journey. We pray that uh, Father Flynn has given you insight, that God has moved through him to work into your life and in your family. So once again, thank you for coming to the Experience Use Renewal. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.